Hi everyone, thank you for joining me again on SE Learning Station. Today we're going to be reading a book called Gloria's Big Problem. Words by Sarah Stiles Bright and pictures by Mike Diaz. So what do you think this book is going to be about? It says Gloria's Big Problem. And if you look at the picture, what do you think the problem is? So make a prediction and as you're reading, see if your prediction is correct or maybe it's going to be something different. Let's get started. Gloria Marvel loved to sing. Sometimes she pretended she was an opera singer. She stood on a chair in her room, stuffed her shirt with pillows, and threw her arms all over the place while she sang in a very big voice. Other times, she pretended she was a rock star. She stood on her bed and jumped up and down and shook her head wildly while playing air guitar. And sometimes, she pretended she was the star of a musical theater production. When she imagined this, she danced back and forth all over her room, waving her arms and making up dance steps while singing with emphasis in a nose-filled kind of way. Gloria loved to sing. But there was a problem, and this problem got in Gloria's way. In fact, Gloria's problem got in the way of most things she really wanted to do. When she decided she wanted to try something, like ride her bike to the store for the first time, or go to Alice Copplepepper's house for an overnight, or try out for the town soccer team, this problem of hers would come sneaking around and talking about things that could go wrong. And her problem would keep right on talking until she changed her mind. Gloria's problem followed her everywhere and wouldn't leave her alone. Even when she asked nicely, she'd say politely, excuse me, but I'd really prefer that you don't bother me. So could you, would you please stop making me scared? But her problem would say it couldn't hear her because she was speaking too softly. And then it would start speaking very loudly in her ear and it would grow bigger and Gloria would get very quiet and feel very small. Once Alice Culpepper invited her to go to the movies and then sleep over, Gloria got very excited, but then her problem showed up and started whispering things about comets or earthquakes or blizzards in June. And she decided maybe it would be better if she didn't go to the movies with Alice Culpepper after all, because what if something awful happened while she was there? Gloria's problem could be a big pain in the neck, especially when she was singing, which, as we know, she loved to do more than anything else. And if she tried to sing in public, like a birthday party or a music class or a church on Sunday mornings, her problem would bellow in its big, unmusical and very ugly voice. And Gloria could barely even sing in a whisper because her problem drowned her out. Gloria's problem always made her worry and always made her feel like she was this big. The problem could be very loud and very obnoxious. The problem didn't bother Alice Culpepper. It didn't bother her older brother, Henry, and it certainly never bothered her parents, Thomas and Melinda Marvel. It didn't seem to bother anyone except Gloria. And to make matters worse, Nobody else seemed to even see or hear the problem. And sometimes that made Gloria feel bonkers, which she wasn't. Once when Gloria tried to tell her brother Henry about her problem, Henry laughed and laughed and told her she was nuts. That wasn't very nice. 
The worst part was he was standing right next to Bitsy Snogbottom and a couple of his other friends at school, and they started laughing at her too. Then Gloria's problem got in her face and started her worrying about being nuts. And so she decided not to talk about her problem anymore. When Gloria heard there was going to be a play down at the, at the community theater and all the children in town were invited to audition, she wanted to try out more than anything. So she started practicing whenever she could, even though her ridiculous problem always seemed to be near, nearby making faces at her and telling her about comets and earthquakes and blizzards in June and what the whole town thought of her singing. The day for tryouts got closer and closer, and even when her problem being loud and obnoxious and bothering her all the time, Gloria still wanted to sing. So she told her parents, and they smiled and said, isn't that sweet, and went back to their crossword puzzles. When she told her brother Henry that she was going to try out for the show, he almost fell off his chair. You're doing what, he howled. You're going to get on stage and sing in front of all those people? You can't do that. You have a problem, a real problem. He laughed some more, and then he laughed harder. Gloria's problem was standing right behind her, held onto its troll-like belly and howled too in her ear so she couldn't hear herself think but nobody saw it or heard it. And that made Gloria mad, madder even than listening to her brother laugh. She marched out the door and down the street to the community center. The hall was filling with parents and their children, all waiting for a chance to sing. Even Frankie Futzmutter was there, though Gloria didn't see him because he was hiding in the bathroom. Gloria looked around, knowing that her big problem was right behind her like it always was. She was beginning to feel the worry rise in her tummy and up through her chest and in her throat until her ears burned hot. She thought, what if a tornado comes swirling through town when I'm singing and it blows me away? Or what if I slip and fall and the whole world sees my underpants? What if a poisonous spider crawls up my leg and bites me and my leg swells up like a blimp and falls off? What if a giant meteor comes craning to earth and outer space and squashes me like a worm under a car wheel? What if there's a thunderstorm when I'm on stage and the lights go out and I get struck by lightning and toasted in front of all those people? And the what ifs kept growing and getting louder and louder and Gloria's heart raced until she thought she couldn't take it anymore. She was still mad at Henry though, and mad at all his friends who laughed at her, mad at her parents, Tom and Melinda Marvel, who always smiled kindly when she mentioned her problem, but never took her seriously, and just plain mad at her problem, who always got in her way. Stop! She was so mad that for once she stamped her feet, turned around, and looked right at her ugly troll face problem and shouted, Stop! as loud as she could. And to Gloria's complete surprise, her problem shrank and hid in the shadows at the back of the auditorium. All the children and parents in the community hall waiting to try out stopped and looked at her. The piano teacher stopped warming up. The cars outside on Gavel Street came to a halt. The postmaster over at the post office stopped sorting mail. The church choir down the street stopped rehearsing. The grocery store clerk stopped ringing in groceries. The after school soccer game at the ba ball, ball field came to a stop. The dentist who was drilling Mabel taught Winger's aching tooth stopped drilling. The veterinarian stopped trying to give Nuncle's very unhappy cat his pill. Tink at Tink's beauty parlor stopped trying to make Mrs. Hutt's stuff and hair 
big hair beautiful even her big brother stopped bragging about himself to bitsy snogbottom in front of the movie theater the whole town stopped and listened nobody had ever listened to her like that ever so gloria marched in big confident steps up to the stage and declared be quiet i've had enough of you you big ugly troll and her problem shrank a little more because if there was anything it didn't like it was being called a troll enough do you hear me there are no tornadoes here today and no porcelain is spiders nobody will see my underpants and if they do i don't care i am not going to listen to you anymore you're going to listen to me and i am going to sing and sing she did right then and there And after Frankie Fudmuster heard Gloria sing her heart out, he did something he'd never done before. He stood on a chair with his hands on his hips, looked very, very fierce, and then followed Gloria on stage, surprising everyone, most of, most of all himself. And later, the whole town, the piano teacher, the postmaster, Tink from Tink's beauty parlor, and Mrs. Huffenstuffin, and her hair and curlers, the traffic policeman, the soccer team, the grocery clerk, the dentist, and Mrs. Totwinger and her large aching tooth, the church choir, Alice Culpepper, the veterinarian, and the knuckles with the unhappy cat, her mother, Melinda, her t father, Tom, even her big brother, Henry, and of course, Bitsy Snogbottom, all came to listen. Glory, Gloria had earned herself a part in the town musical. She was a singing ladybug with one little itsy bitsy song that she sang while bounding around the stage with a grasshopper played by Frankie Fudmutter, and she sang it beautifully. And that's the end of the book. So I'm wondering, did you think that that was going to be what the story was about? Did you know that Gloria's big problem was a problem she was fighting around herself? So her problem was coming from her own brain and it was getting in the way of her doing new things or trying new things. And the way she dealt with that was confronting it and telling it to stop. So this is a little bit more about the author and the illustrator. And I hope you enjoyed this book and realize that if you have a big problem or something that's getting in the way of you trying new things, sometimes confronting it and going ahead and trying it shows that you can get through these times and you can do it. Tell that problem of yours that it is a little troll and it needs to stop getting in the way. Thank you everyone for joining me today for this book. I look forward to you popping in again and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.